Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to investigate lifts, so let's get started. Before we go on to investigate the different cases of motion in a lift, we're going to look at mass and weight, and this is a reminder from National 5 Physics. So remember that mass and weight are not the same thing but are often confused in everyday life. So we have the definitions here, and we say that mass is the quantity of particles that make up an object. It is a scalar quantity and is measured in kilograms, kg. So remember for mass we do not care about a direction, just a magnitude, and it basically just describes how much stuff or how much matter makes up an object. Weight on the other hand is the force due to gravity acting on an object. It is a vector quantity since it's a force and it's measured in newtons. So when we're talking about weight we do care about a direction. You should remember as well the relationship relating these, so we've got W equals mg. Remember that W is the weight measured in newtons, m is the mass measured in kilograms which we've just seen, and g is the gravitational field strength measured in newtons per kilogram, which always takes a value of 9.8 newtons per kilogram on the Earth, but it will vary remember depending on which planet you're on. The reason we've just looked at that is because we're going to be talking about weight when we're investigating lifts. So it says here that we can simply measure our own weight using bathroom scales. At rest, the reading on the scales is equal to the force of gravity acting on us. However, this is not true if we are accelerating or decelerating vertically, for example in a lift. So it actually becomes more complicated and that's what we're going to look at. When you stand on the scales, there are two forces acting on you. There's the downward force due to gravity, i.e. weight, and that's acting on you at all times anyway. And for what we're about to do, we're going to call this capital W. The other force acting on you is called the reaction force, and we're going to call this R, and this is the upward force due to the scales. So remember, Newton's third law involves a Newton pair of forces, so these are our two forces here which act on the different objects. So we've got weight acting downwards on you, and the reaction force acting back up on you. And throughout this section, we're going to be using an important result. And the important result is that the reaction force is equal to the reading on the scales. So when you're standing on a set of scales which are not in a lift or when the lift is stationary, then the reaction force upwards is going to balance the weight downwards acting on you. And we're about to use this result in what follows. Just before we look at seven different cases for motion in a lift, it's useful to do the following first. So it says here that in the cases below, consider a 60 kilogram girl standing on a set of scales in a lift. We are going to find the reading on the scales, i.e. the reaction force, R, in each case. Throughout this problem, we will take upwards to be positive. So remember our sign convention, useful for higher physics. Before we start, it is useful to calculate the weight as we will use this throughout. So we're going to use W equals mg to get 60 from the mass times 9.8 on Earth, which equals 588 newtons. So if you put that into your calculator, you should get that answer. So we're going to be using this weight value of 588 newtons throughout the seven different cases here. So the fact that we've done it to begin with is going to be useful. Now the first case we're going to analyse is when the lift is stationary. So imagine you're standing in a lift on a set of scales and the lift is not moving, it's stationary. Well we've got a simple free body diagram here with the reaction force upwards and the weight downwards. And in this case, because the lift is stationary, then we can therefore say that we have balanced forces. So if we've got balanced forces, then that means the reaction force R is equal to the weight, which means that the reaction force R is equal to 588 newtons. Remember, we just worked that out. In the second case, we have a lift moving at a constant speed. Now, if the lift is moving at a constant speed, it must be the case that there are balanced forces again. Because remember, Newton's first law says that an object will stay at rest or move at a constant speed in a straight line unless acted on by an unbalanced force. So in this case, we've got a constant speed, so there must be balanced forces, so we can again say that reaction force is equal to the weight, so we have the R equals 588 newtons. So we've actually got the same result here for a lift being stationary and a lift moving at a constant speed. So we can say as a little summary, that a stationary lift and one moving at a constant speed give the same result. Case number three is a lift accelerating upwards, and in this specific example, we're going to assume it's accelerating upwards at 2.5 meters per second squared. So the lift is moving upwards and it's speeding up as it does so, it's accelerating. So this means that we must have an unbalanced force acting upwards, which means that our reaction force upwards must be greater than our weight downwards. 
So here we can say that F is positive up the way, so the reaction force upwards must be greater than the weight downwards. So we're going to do a little calculation to work out what the reaction force upwards is going to be. Now because we've got an unbalanced force here, we're going to use Newton's second law, which is F equals MA. And we've got the F equals MA, which is equal to the reaction force minus the weight. And the reason we've written that is because the reaction force upwards will be equal to the difference between these two forces. That is the resultant force left over at the end that is making this lift move upwards. So if we put in our numbers into this, we know the mass is 60 kilograms. We know the acceleration is 2.5. So 60 times 2.5 equals R minus 580, which we calculated at the beginning. So therefore, if we do this multiplication and add 580 over to the other side, then we get R equals 738 newtons, which is an apparent increase in weight. So we can say that for a lift accelerating upwards, there is going to be an apparent increase in weight on the scales. Case number four is a lift decelerating downwards. So what this means is the lift is moving downwards and it's slowing down as it does so. And we're gonna assume again that it's decelerating at 2.5 meters per second squared. So in this case, we can again say that the unbalanced force must be acting upwards because the lift is slowing down as it moves downwards. So the overall force must be acting upwards to cause it to slow down. In this case, we've got again the F is positive. So our reaction force upwards R must be greater than our weight downwards. So we've got the same situation as we had for case three. So F equals MA equals R minus W, our unbalanced force. So we've got 60 times 2.5 is equal to R minus 588. So therefore, R is equal to 738 newtons, again, an apparent increase in weight. So this is the exact same situation that we just had for case three for the lift accelerating upwards. And this might seem a bit strange to you, but what this means is, if we summarize, an upwards acceleration gives the same result as a downwards deceleration. Both of these cases will give you a reading on the scales when you're in the lift that is actually bigger than your weight that was measured before you were in the lift. Case number five is a lift accelerating downwards, and this time we're gonna assume that it's accelerating downwards at 1.5 meters per second squared instead of 2.5. So in this case, our lift is moving downwards and it's speeding up as it does so, so we must be able to say that the unbalanced force F is actually acting down this way because it's speeding up as it's moving downwards. So this means that our unbalanced force is negative, assuming downwards to be negative, so we can therefore say that our weight downwards must be greater than our reaction force R upwards. So what we can do is then then write our unbalanced force F equals MA, and this time we're writing it as W minus R instead of R minus W. And the reason we're doing this is because F is negative, so we're in the opposite direction. So all we've done there is swap the two terms around. So instead of R minus W, we've got W minus R. And another way to see that is if we go up here to the previous expression, the F equals MA equals R minus W, if we introduce a negative sign into this side because we're now saying that the unbalanced force is negative, then that will give us minus R minus W, which will give us minus minus R plus W. So that's the same as saying W minus R. So that's all we're doing here. So we're saying F equals MA equals W minus R because we've changed the sign of the unbalanced force. And putting in the numbers, we get 60 times 1.5 equals 588 minus R. So adding R to the other side and subtracting 60 times 1.5 from 588, we end up with R equals 498 newtons, i.e. an apparent decrease in weight. So we're saying that for a lift accelerating downwards, you will experience an apparent decrease in weight on the scales. Similarly, for case six, we have a lift decelerating upwards this time at 1.5 meters per second squared. So we have the lift moving moving upwards and it's slowing down as it does so, so there must be a bigger unbalanced force acting down the way causing it to slow down as it moves upwards. So again, we can say that there must be an unbalanced force F down the way, which means again the F is negative, so our weight downwards must be greater than the reaction force upwards, just like in case five. So again, we have F equals MA equals W minus R. Put in the numbers, 60 times 1.5 equals 588 minus R gives us the same answer as case five. So R equals 498 Newtons. So again, we have that for a lift decelerating upwards, you will experience an apparent decrease in weight. We can summarize by saying that a downwards acceleration gives the same result as an upwards deceleration. 
And again, this is something you'll have to be aware of. The last case, K7, is to look at what happens if the lift cable was to snap. So if the lift cable was to snap, both the girl and the scales would accelerate downwards at the same rate because they're both in the lift. They would be in what we call free fall. So remember, you are said to be in free fall if you're experiencing the force due to gravity alone. Therefore, we could say that there is no reaction force upwards on the scales because you're on the scales and you're moving downwards at the same rate as the lift is. So we must be able to say that R equals zero newtons, i.e. the reaction force is zero because it's almost as if the scales and the lift that you're within are moving out from beneath you. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.